And what I want to talk to you guys about is the difference, I think, that, that I can help make and what needs to be made in, in Columbia. But before I talk about South Carolina and talk about the things that I think are necessary there, um, I've started to talk a little bit about the federal government and the predicament it's in as a backdrop to what I think needs to be done at the uh, state level. Um, I don't want to sound overly pessimistic, but I pretty much lost faith um, in Republicans and Democrats in Washington, D.C. to do anything material to address our problems. We, we have a, a $16 trillion debt. I can't even fathom $16 trillion. Um, we've had over three years in a row now of $1 trillion plus budget deficits. Um, we haven't even had a budget in, in, in over three years. Uh, we've seen no effort made at all to control entitlements. Um, I see no appetite for that whatsoever. Um, and, and what's really scared me as I've delved into um, my economic studies is learning about the Federal Reserve and learning what it's doing to enable, uh, and it is an enabler, uh, what it does to enable the federal government to live uh, profitably, what, what, what it does to allow them to incur this debt, to maintain this entitlement structure. Because every year they've got to come up with a trillion plus dollars simply to match the outlay, outlays that they've appropriated. And so if you look at how that happens, the Treasury goes out and they sell securities. Um, those securities are purchased by what, what are called primary dealers, whether Goldman Sachs or J.P. Morgan. And then in turn, those primary dealers sell those securities to the Federal Reserve, which prints money to buy those securities. And so you kind of follow it all the way back, and, and the way that we're paying our national debt and the way we're propping up entitlement spending is by the Federal Reserve printing more money and putting it into our economy to the point where over the last three years we have tripled our monetary base. We have tripled our monetary base. I mean, that, that just absolutely astounds me. Uh, the number of these in the economy now um, has been tripled in the last three years. And you ask yourself, well, well why haven't we seen inflation yet? And why haven't we seen prices skyrocket? Well, in some respects, <coughs> we have. Um, but one of the main reasons is, is that while Ben Bernanke is, um, is telling the Fed to go ahead and buy these Treasury securities to finance uh, an unsustainable budget, he's paying banks interest on their excess reserves so they don't lend them out. So all they're doing is piling, piling up. And so at some point in time, I mean, there's no exit strategy here because those dollars aren't being sucked back out of the economy. They're earning interest, okay, and they're just getting worse and worse and worse. And, and historically, the Fed would inject money into the economy by buying Treasury securities. And Treasury securities are, are, are fairly marketable, and you could sell them back out to the public, and the money that's paid into the Fed, they could then destroy it and then go ahead and bring the monetary base back. They can't do that now because of what they've done the last three years. I mean, Ben Bernanke has taken the Federal Reserve and given it powers, uh, or just taken power, um, that no other Fed chairman would have even assumed. I mean, he's buying uh, not just Treasury securities, he's buying toxic assets from specific banks. I mean, he's allowing certain companies to, to fail, like Lehman Brothers, because uh, they haven't curried favor, and other companies like Bear Stearns, he's saving because they have curried favor. I mean, we, we absolutely, and I got into a little bit of trouble in, in Tampa in calling Ben Bernanke a monetary dictator, but that's what he is. I mean, he sits there and he creates money and buys toxic assets from his, his, uh, his corporate friends and it dilutes the savings of everybody else. And it runs counter to everything we've learned about government in America. I mean, our Constitution was founded on the premise that man is flawed, man is corrupt. I mean, the old, the old adage that absolute, I mean, power corrupts and absolute power corrupts absolutely. I mean, those are true things, and they're, they're as true today as they were back in 1789 when the federal constitution was ratified. And so what our founders did, quite wisely, is they went ahead and they took government power and they split it up into separate branches and had those branches check and balance each other so that too much power was never reposed in one person or one branch of government. Because um, they were afraid of tyranny. They, they had just gotten a, a heavy dose of tyranny from King George, and they didn't want that in America. But flash forward today, and the most powerful man in America, and I would say the most powerful man in the world right now, is, is Ben Bernanke, the, the chairman of the Federal Reserve. He has the ability, at a whim, to fire up the printing press and shove money into the economy and buy up toxic assets that can never be resold, 
I mean, he's not going to be able to suck that money back out. Who's going to buy these toxic assets? No one is. That money's out there, and it's diluted our savings. So those three things have really made me pessimistic about federal government. The $16 trillion debt and the trillion dollar a year deficits, the explosion in entitlements with no appetite whatsoever to curb them, and the way all this is being financed in a way by the Federal Reserve, which isn't accountable to any of you, by the way. They, they do whatever they want. It's unchecked power. Um, so I am extremely pessimistic about our federal government. 